So we're down on this bit of ground today. Um, we've got some sheep going to be coming into these fields in the next sort of couple of three weeks. Uh, they'll be lambing in here. So um, I see the other day there was a couple of foxes in the wood here. So ideally I was going to try and thin them out, um, clear up any foxes in the area before the uh, sheep are here lambing. So uh, it's pretty much open ground, just a few hedgerows and a couple of little pockets of wood. So probably what I'll do is put a bit of bait out and then um, come back tonight and uh, have a go, see if we can clear one or two up. Um, first of all, I'm going to zero the rifle just to make sure everything's all good for later. I've uh, got a new rifle to try out. It's a Remington 700. Uh, it's a really nice rifle actually. It's um, got a form stock on there. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of Remingtons. I normally shoot a Remington 260 rifle, so very familiar with it. Although they put the bolt on the wrong side of this one, which is a bit of a shame, but I'll have to make do. So yeah, 243 should be ample for foxes. So looking forward to trying that out and we're using the uh, sight mark wraith on there as well. So uh, yeah, nice little combination. Okay, so we're going to be using some um, little thermal targets here. Basically what these are is they're actually little patches for, um, for uh, a bigger, sort of like a fox target or something or a deer target you can buy. And these are just to cover over the, the bullet holes and the targets so you can reuse them. But they're, uh, they make quite a good little aiming point, so only about half inch square. So we use that as our aiming mark, and that's all good. Okay, so we've come back about 50 yards from the target, and uh, we're just going to get a rough zero initially, and then we'll move back to about 100 yards for a proper zero. I'm using the uh, Spartan Javelin Pro Hunt Hack Bipod today. So it's a very posh bit of kit. Nice thing about this is it just attaches straight into the rifle on a magnetic arrangement. And it's as easy as that and it comes off just as easily. So for those of you who don't like a bipod on your rifle all the time, that's ideal. That's quite handy, that's our first shot. So it's nicely in line, uh, which makes zero in it a bit easier. So all I need to do now is just move that over onto the target. Okay, so that's perfect. That's right on the target. So that just goes to show how well the one shot zero function works on the, uh, on the Wraith. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to about 100 yards and then um, have another go, which should hopefully put us just slightly higher that, because that should give us roughly a 200 yard zero at 50 yards, as we're zeroed at the moment, so. Right. Right, so that round is, as we thought, probably about three quarters of an inch high, and it's just slightly to the left, only by maybe a quarter of an inch, so I'm just gonna tweak that over just a little bit. About there and that should be spot on so what i'll do is i'll have one more shot just to confirm it is uh shooting where we want it to and then uh, i think we'll be good to take it out in the field looks good So this is the corner of the field where I've seen foxes around. I saw a pair the other day, it wasn't actually a pair, it was probably two dog foxes, because at this time of year they'd be mating. So uh, what I saw was one fox chase another one out of the wood here, and uh, it chased it off and it went down through this way. And you can see here, there's a regular, well-used fox run that goes through this hedge and down through the ditch. So um, that's obviously an in and out route they're taking into this corner of the field. So in this wood there's got to be at least a pair of foxes um, which is why one fox is chasing the other out of the wood basically it's just a territorial thing. So uh, probably what I'll do is I'll set up at the top of this field 
so I can shoot down safely into this area here. And um, I think what I'll do is I'll put some bait out along here as well, just to keep the fox occupied and give me a chance for a shot. Okay, so we're gonna use a bit of cat food as bait uh, today. What I'm using is uh, a fish one, which uh, just gives a good strong smell to attract them in. Uh, it's also it's, uh, got all the oils and minerals and that for their coat, keep them nice and healthy. So I'm gonna open that and just scatter that around. And that'll just keep them searching around for little bits of food. And also what I'll do, I'll just smear that on the fence post a bit as well, just to really get the scent around. Yeah, that should do. Right, I'm going to swap over and use the tripod now. Um, I've taken the bipod off because most of the shots or the shots I'm likely to take now um, I don't really want to be laying down because I'll get the IR bouncing back off the grass. So uh, with the tripod it'll be a little bit higher, it should be better. seem too interested. I think it was a badger anyway. <laughs> it's a bit hard to tell because it's a little bit further out. So let's have another one around. I don't expect you to pick that up on the camera but there's one screaming right out of the back. Good sized dog fox that. Excellent. Okay, so we managed to get one there, so that was a good result. 
Um, we've had a little wander around, a little scan around, haven't seen anything. We saw a badger over the back there, which at first I thought was a fox, but when we got a bit closer we could see it was definitely a badger. So uh, other than that, a few rabbits, not much else about. It's quite a, quite a still evening, which um, doesn't always really help because sometimes you need sort of just a little bit of a breeze, a bit of wind, just to sort of um, kind of take any noise and that away from you as you're walking around. So, yeah, good result though to get that one, and uh, I think we'll call it a night.